Christine. Um, it's really exciting that lots of Dementia Alliance International members have had their uh, abstracts accepted to speak at the Alzheimer's Disease International Conference in Singapore. I believe you had two accepted. Do you want to tell me what uh, abstracts you submitted? Oh, I'd love to. Hi, Kate. Um, I submitted two abstracts. One was on um, fundraising. Um, and the other one was on living well with dementia. Um, yeah, I was thrilled uh, when both were accepted. I totally honored. Um, as you know, there's a lot of work that people don't understand that it takes yes, to... So, so what's the difference between uh, having an abstract accepted, for example, and being invited as a plenary keynote speaker. When they invite you to submit abstracts and you submit them, once they're accepted, there is no funding available to help you actually be there to present. So then it falls on you and any organization that you're affiliated with to do all the fundraising. So, so, so unlike an academic who submits an abstract, that probably their university has funded, will fund them to attend as right. part of their research. Right. Um, and um, just like I found out when I spoke in Chicago, um, and I spoke about it briefly, and that's why I wanted to do the this, this time about fundraising in particular, because I did touch on it in Chicago. Um, the fact that, um, you know, I did a lot of fundraising to help get us there because as you and the rest of us know, but the rest of the world probably doesn't understand, um, DAI is of by and for people with dementia. We have um, very little funding come our way. A lot of the bigger organizations, better known organizations, um, take the bulk of fundraising for Alzheimer's and dementia, and they don't disperse it fairly, in my opinion, to organizations like ours, which helps so many people at the ground level who are actually living with dementia. And part of living well is doing these um, conventions and speaking and bringing our, our piece of the puzzle to help fight to to get answers and and help those living with dementia um we we hold the key um yeah, so I, I think we do we've been the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle um because for years and in fact it continues so many decisions about us are made without us and um we need to be at the table but unlike everybody else who attends most of the international or local conferences we're not working anymore because due to the discrimination of dementia uh, most of us aren't able to work or due to the disabilities of dementia we're not able to work so so we're trying to campaign within the same space as everybody else who's funded with a salary and often funded by their organization and and that's what i spoke to in chicago that there were so many people sitting in in the audience um, who was paid to be there, who had everything paid for them to get there and, and for a while they were there. And then there was people like me who were actually speaking and contributing in ways that they aren't able to, um, who had to try and find funding. Mm -hmm. And when, when I approached those other organizations for help, I was simply and quite bluntly told that the money they raise is for them. And my response was, I thought this was about people with dementia, which left everybody gasping. Yeah, but well, that's we do, that. yeah, we do sit within the middle of their mission statement. Yes, yes. Um, they don't have an organization without us. So, it's my opinion that they have to start helping us. So you, um, you had an experience just recently since you had your abstract accepted and you, you're uh, planning on setting up a fundraising campaign because you, you 
uh, did three different fundraising campaigns to pay to get yourself to Chicago last year. Um, and uh, what, what's been the responses so far of, you know, friends and family around you? I have a lot of people that grumble and moan. Um, then I have the people who very bluntly say to me, if you can't afford to go your, fly yourself there, you shouldn't be going, which leaves me gasping, considering that these same people, uh, I've spent years supporting them and their grandchildren and, and their families, whether it was to buy Christmas wreaths or chocolates or whatever they're selling, um, because they need the help so that their people can do what they would like to do. Yeah. And yet I'm trying to do something and help find solutions to things that could impact millions of people. Exactly. To improve the lives of 50 million people with dementia. It, it, this reminds me, do you remember in Chicago, um, uh, a younger than us academic, um, Professor William Hugh came out to dinner with us one night. Um, he's from America and he'd written a response um, uh, to an article that was in the Lancet Psychiatry um, where dementia advocates' diagnoses was being questioned and, and William wrote a, a very interesting response to it and he said that he really likened people like uh, you and I and, um, you know, Wendy Mitchell in, in the UK and Chris Roberts and, and the rest of the dementia advocates around the world, really, who, who aren't the typical older late stage um, dementia patients or uh, residents and he likened us to um, para-olympians with mostly invisible disabilities so that would be like saying to a para-olympian well you'll have to fund yourself to go to the olympics yes so so i was quite taken back by the response um and and i think I think in part, um, it's because people are falsely misled. I had someone say to me, well, the, the big organizations pay for you guys to attend those things anyway, so why would you fundraise? And again, I have to gasp and say to them, you are very naive in how this all really works. And so then I have to explain to them how that isn't the case. Yeah, exactly. And how we have to actually compete for those dollars. And they just shake their heads. Then they say, well, that's wrong. And I say, yes, it is wrong. Yeah. But, and yeah, we're trying to change that. And we're trying to get them to, to contribute more. Yeah. I, I went but until they do, we still need the help. We do. I went to a research meeting recently, as you know, and uh, half of my flight was funded by the organisers, but the rest, um, including accommodation and, and uh, taxis and trains and things, um, I've had to find the money for through DAI um, and or other sources. And, and yet one of the panel speakers, um, when I was at this event, I heard him saying, oh, I, I heard, you know, I believe you're going to cover my $27 train fare. So everybody else who was in paid employment, who were speaking on panels or, or keynote speakers, had everything funded. And yet for one person, only one person with dementia to attend this event, um, this is definitely a podcast, <laughs> um, but for only one person to attend this event, we had to partially self-fund. You know, it's extraordinary. Yeah, to, to, to me, it's, it's unconscionable. It's, well, you know, if uh, we talk about the CRPD, I think it's Article 19 on inclusion. Um, if people with disabilities don't have the funds to be included, civil society or organisations are actually obliged under the CRPD to yes. help fund us. And I think, I think that's partly why I wanted to do this... Um, talk in Singapore about fundraising. So because did you accept it as an abstract or as a poster? Um, one is accepted as an abstract, so speaking. The other one is the poster. So 
That's the fun, uh, fundraising one? The fundraising one, yes. Okay. So I have to make sure, and they're, they're giving me the time to, to do it, but um, I have to make sure that I make it really impactful, and I have to make sure that those points come through loud and clear, that it's time for change, it's time that we hold them to the CRPD Absolutely. guidelines, mm. and, and we need to remind them that it is, in fact, their rights and duties to help fund us. Yeah, and, and I, mean, I think, uh, I, you know, just uh, it, I'd like to promote the ADI 2020 conference while we're chatting because today is the last day of early bird registration, um, even though for people with dementia that is going to be extended. Um, but ADA, uh, Alzheimer's Disease Association Singapore, have um, unbelievably, they've found a sponsor um, who's donated the 40,000 Singapore dollars needed for Dementia Alliance International to be able to host a lunchtime symposium. So in many ways, you know, ADA Singapore has been extraordinarily um, resourceful and generous towards us. And they've also found a sponsor to help reduce the registration rates. So that, to, to me, that probably the first um, national organization who's really 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 put their money where their mouth is yes um, and, and that's incredible you know I, i'm so excited that we can run a lunchtime symposium that ordinarily we wouldn't be able to do now now what we need to do is find the funds to get people there to make sure we can run it well that's always the problem um you know not unlike when we um went to new york and and you know, and Chicago, and and uh, you know, those funds should be made available to us. Mm. If if, for example, and I'm just going to use this for an example, we have Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's Association is in how many countries? And if they took a small percentage out of the fundraising that they do every year and pass it over to organizations like us so that we could attend these conferences so that we could keep our pool of speakers available yeah. um, how much more could all the academics the professionals the doctors the researchers the people that need to hear us would be able to gain so much yeah, and, and it I, would be a win-win for everybody. Absolutely, and I think that people don't even think about the energy that it takes us. Number one, just to act like an academic and submit an abstract—that's asking a lot of people with dementia. And then number two, put together a presentation for oral or poster style. But then number three, to have to spend months standing on street stalls fundraising just so that we can get there to have a voice yeah people don't people don't understand yeah no, like, no, tell, tell me the fundraising you did last year to get yourself to chicago so that we, um, we use the money we allocated to you to one more person with dementia i um i sold some of my artwork um so I, I promoted some of my own artwork, which I don't proclaim to be an artist, but I did manage to sell a couple of pieces. Um, I held a big um, garage sale. I held um, a big raffle. And I held a big hot dog sale. So there was four things. Um, and um, But it takes its toll. It does, I, yeah. I need to be able to focus on, um, you know, my abstracts are are there, but the, and that's only the the small body. I have to complete the whole speech. Exactly. Yeah. And that takes so much brain power. Like people don't understand. Yeah, and the, um, the battery runs flat. It's like a battery. Yes. Right. So I always have to start. Let the the battery wires down. Refire it up and go again and 
that takes days and weeks and months to be able to get to that final piece. I then have to have, because of the problems of my dementia, I have to take my written work, I have to have someone else edit it because I won't necessarily be able to see spelling errors and all of those things. Yeah. Um, so I have to have help with that, that it has to come back to me. And it is a lot of work. Yeah, well, it, I, I think this has been such a fascinating conversation talking about, you know, self fundraising for people with dementia to actually um, have a voice at meetings at conferences at events so i really hope that your uh, friends and family get behind you with your um, fundraising campaign to get to singapore and dementia alliance international is about to launch a fundraising campaign as well so let's hope that um, we find people around the world who who get together and support as many people as possible and their care partners to get to Singapore for the Alzheimer's Disease International 2020 conference in Singapore next March.